Very cool. Okay, so today we continue with our class of Hilkas Teshua. Today's class number six. <clears throat> and we start with Sefer Shmiras Lashon. And um, the topic is best of all. A good topic. Mm. So it says uh, Shimon ben uh, Shimon, his Rabban Gamliel's son says, All my days I have been raised among the sages, and I found nothing better than uh, for one sentence silence. That's a famous one. <clears throat> it's from Perkyovus 117. So it says, uh, Rabbi, Sh um, Rabbi Shimon is in fact saying, I was, um, <clears throat> I was reared uh, among the sages, and I had the opportunity to glean from all their uh, precious sacred qualities. Okay. And um, of all these qualities, the art of sound is the most outstanding. So this uh, Rabbi Shimon said, I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I, I saw the great sages that you only read in the books. I, um, I saw them live. Right? And that's the conclusion that I did. <clears throat> Alternative Rabbi Shimon may uh, have meant the following. The sages were uh, the wisest of men and, um, and surely did not engage in a pointless conversation. Nevertheless, there is was nothing aside from the speaking wisdom of Torah, which uh, they found more beneficial for themselves than them silent. As we said before, <clears throat> that's what a person must do all days so of the minutes, uh, hours, uh, minutes, of course, comes up to the hours of his life, right? Uh, to speak the, the, the words of the Torah or, or, or keep silent. That's, uh, that's uh, two choices, basically. Rabbi Shimon was uh, precise in saying, which uh, literally means, I found nothing better than uh, better for, for the body. Right? Meaning uh, all of this, uh, all of our difficulties comes, uh, <clears throat> from, uh, come, comes from, it's, uh, from our behavior. So our, uh, our physical difficulty comes because of our spirituality. Man's uh, corporal existence in this world makes it virtually impossible for even the purest of the soul uh, <clears throat> to ensure that, uh, that, uh, that his every utterance is without flaw. Right? So, I mean, uh, we try to not to speak Lashon uh, Harab, but uh, not always work, right? This, uh, this is why silence is desirable. So basically, if you're silent, most likely you're not going to say something wrong. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, if such was true in the generation of Rabbi Shimon, uh, whose sages were accustomed to speaking, uh, speaking only the words uh, of the true wisdom, then what, uh, uh, what is uh, what of uh, ourselves, whose minds are preoccupied with the matter devoid of the substance uh, and meaning? If one's mouth will be uh, <clears throat> will be restrained by the harm, ha, uh, harm, 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 harmness of silence, so one of the opposite. If one's mouth uh, will will not be restrained by the harmness of silence, <clears throat> then invariably it will speak in a way that it has become a custom since one's youth. So if you if person does not stop himself. I mean, of course, uh, children, they, they talk, they, they understand, they do not understand what they talk, they start uh, talking about, but uh, a person has to restrain himself, uh, adult. And the loss will outweigh the many gain times over. <clears throat> so unless we can uh, learn to control our speech, loss, as they say, uh, will outweigh the gain many times over. <clears throat> Sorry, okay. So let's uh, go to our Hilkas Teshua. And uh, we're on chapter two. And we're going to start today with Halacha number four. And it says, <clears throat> so I'm going to read the whole Halacha in a second. Okay, it's, it's uh, very short, pretty short. Um, so it says, among the path of repentance is for the penitent to A. Constantly call out before God, crying and entreating Him, 
element written. And B, to perform the charity according to his potential. C, to distance himself far from the object of the sin. So don't, uh, don't put yourself in a, even close to that situation if you know that you have a problem in that area, right? Which just makes sense. And D, to change his name as if to say I'm a different person and not the same who, who, who sinned. E, to change his behavior in its entirety to good and the path of the righteousness end. So I, I think uh, the, this E is, uh, is the most powerful one. <clears throat> so even uh, to, to change the name, I mean, uh, he can do all of these uh, things before, uh, as, as we said before, but if he's good, not going to change his behavior, basically, well, what was the point? Okay, he, he was Moshe, now he's high. Uh, but uh, how does, uh, does it change anything, right? But if he changed his deeds, that's, uh, that's the most important one. Of course, uh, as, as Rambam is going to explain, you have to do all of them. But uh, remember, to, to change behavior first. <coughs> Next one, F, to travel in exile from his home. Exile atones for sin because it causes person to, uh, to be submissive, humble, and meek of spirit. So, which is uh, very un understandable. Like, I, I would say, even if you're a tourist, right, in another country, and you don't know, do not know where the language is, you don't know where to go and you don't know this and you don't know that and you don't have, uh, let's say if you have a car, so now you don't have a car and it's not easy to, to get from one point to another. So it's, uh, I think it makes you very, <clears throat> very humble. And, and plus when you're tourist, maybe you have money, but here, uh, well, when you uh, go in exile, so you, for sure you don't have money. I mean, uh, uh, <clears throat> unless it's a rich person, but usually it's not. <coughs> To continue um, from the beginning with commentaries. Among the path of repentance uh, is uh, for the penitent too. The expression implies the, um, a, a course of behavior that will lead the person to true and complete repentance. Meaning, um, what, whatever we, we just said is, uh, is, is a recipe, right? Rambam said, do all of this. So, I mean, all the, whatever it's needed, not all of it. I said, well, we'll see. Also, these acts uh, will, uh, acts will to, to reinforce and strengthen the commitment to Teshua that had already been made. Also, right? So, I mean, even if he decided to do Teshua, so of course it needs uh, strength, as, as we're going to explain, um, point by point. Right. The case of Mishnah explained that the, uh, that, uh, the course of the action prescri uh, prescribed will bring a person to complete atonement, right? to complete atonement, and nullify the negative effect caused by the previous behavior. So that's, uh, that's uh, what Rambam is, uh, is uh, suggesting us to do. According, um, accordingly, he cites uh, the source for this uh, halakha, as a, um, as a statement in Rosh Hashanah 16b. Four things rend the, the evil decree uh, against a person. Charity, crying out to God, right? Um, changing one's name, and changing one's behavior. Other add the changing one, one place. So many, many times when, uh, I also just say, if you don't have luck in, in the cell, in a certain community, in a certain city, in a certain town, wherever you are, so just move to another place, right? So, and uh, as we know, with Abraham, he had to move to another place. Okay, so let's go one by one. A, um, constantly call out before God, crying and entreating. Constantly. Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, so, uh, commentary said, Rosh Hashanah 16b, quotes Psalm uh, 107 28. 
they call out to God in their distress. He saved them from uh, their actions as a source of this concept. Meaning, uh, uh, when, when we call out to God, the, the way uh, yeah, crying out and entreating. So that, that's, that's the prayer. So what, uh, what we do, we say, Hashem, everything uh, in, in your hand. So ba- basically, many, many times, uh, um, why, why, why people sin? Right? Why, why do they have these desires? And may, many times, they, don't, uh, they, they do not accept uh, Hashem's authority. Right? He said, okay, maybe he said so, but I have uh, my desires, and I, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to act on them. But uh, if, if a person accepts uh, Hashem's authority, that he uh, he's the one who can punish. So maybe this person, maybe person say, I, I have this desire, but guess what? I, I don't want to. I don't want to be punished. Like uh, <clears throat> for for example, there, there are many, many people. They would many people. They would do uh, what they want, but they're afraid to go to prison. Right? That, that that's the only uh, thing that holding them back. Right? So when when they would uh, not afraid. They would do uh, whatever they want. But now they know there is a punishment. They're not going to do that. <clears throat> so same, uh, I think in many cases, uh, same uh, relationship with discussion. So they, they do not believe that he's going to punish. Somehow. No. Okay. They didn't watch our movie, Hibut Hakev. Right? Uh, B, to perform charity. According to his potential, perform charity, commentary. The Rambam does not state to give charity. Interesting. In, um, <clears throat> in addition to, to whatever money a person gives, he must act in charitable manner, perform deeds of kindness, and, uh, and actually do in favor for his fellow men. So because why? Because the charity will save one uh, from death. So let, let's uh, try to, to understand what Rambam is saying. So Rambam did not say give charity. So it's it's very easy just uh, for a rich person or not such a rich person. It doesn't matter. The, the person just gives money and then think that everything should, should be done, right? So just because he gave uh, whatever, $100, so now they have to do, somebody is going to feed on his behalf all of the uh, Jewish poor uh, people in the town. Maybe not. Maybe somebody is going to steal. How do you know? <coughs> Just because you uh, maybe they they are going to, to to buy this spoiled food or whatever, so uh, I would uh, I would say just take the the, uh, the addresses of these uh, poor poor people and deliver yourself buy good stuff, whatever you would buy to for yourself buy and deliver to them, right? So do uh, acts of charity. You can uh, there are many acts of charity that you can do. <clears throat> Some. Uh, so, I have uh, some of my students, so they say, I don't, I don't have money, so how can I do the acts of charity at almost all? And there are many, many ways, like uh, you can talk to a person, talk to a person nicely, you, need, you know somebody is sick, go visit that person, right? I mean, um, I have a question here. Yeah, it doesn't cost you much money. Go ahead, yes. Uh, so I heard the terms, two terms that, for me, it seems to be similar. One is uh, Zaka and the other is uh, Chesed. Uh, what, which is the difference, to be precise? Okay, so Zaka, the Zaka, it's it's actually the more um, in um, uh, most of the time it's it's, it's money that, that that you give, but Chesed is kindness. So when when you give money. For example, to poor people, you, you're doing the acts of kindness. And uh, many times in uh, Talmudic literature, the, the, so, or in, in, in translation, they in, interchange the, uh, the terms. Why? Because the Kai is his own uh, tzedek, right? So it's, uh, <clears throat> is, uh, is, uh, what is it? It's, it's like, um, uh, I'm, I'm looking for, um, for a word. Um, <clears throat> When, when you establish uh, the, um, the justice, right? So meaning that tzedakah, right? So, so when, when you establish the justice, so, uh, so you have a little extra, 
but that person does not have even whatever you have. He has uh, 10 times less. So you give him, I don't know, like you have uh, no, $5, so you give him $1. Okay, you, 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 according to him, to that person, you're very rich, you have $5, but he has nothing. You understand? So you, in some, in some sense, you, 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 you build an injustice, giving that person money. Right? So, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what it is. So, but uh, in many cases, uh, as we uh, explained, the, when we do chesed, so acts of kindness, it does not have to be money. So, uh, so you, you know, some, somebody is sick, right? So, so some, some, somebody told me uh, that that person is unemployed, but uh, the sick person gave, uh, gave, gave this lady money. Right, and then the, this lady went and then bought, bought him uh, food. You understand? And then and he and then and she bought him uh, what is it uh, medicine and stuff like that. So it's it's also has it. I mean that does not cost money, but still uh, acts of charity. Right. <clears throat> um, can, yeah, can we say that uh, charity is the same as as chesed? Yes. In, in, yes. in, in some say yes, yes, in, in, in some sense. So uh, you see, when when you say tzedakah, right? When you say about, about money, right? If, if you're talking about money, so money you 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 would uh, you would give uh, poor people, right? Well, let's say, right? But chesed, on another hand, it's it's act of kindness you you can do with any any person because it's not about food. I, I, rich people also get sick. You understand? And uh, if just just because uh, he has the money money in a, in a bank that does not mean that that he has uh, food food in the house let's say right so he needs somebody to go to the to the store and uh, bring him food and maybe cook just, just because he has money does not mean much you understand so even for this rich person you can do has it but uh, tzedaka is uh, only limited let's say for, uh, uh, for for poor people you understand so acts of kindness are more 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 encompassing all right, so so one one more time this B and there is one more comment. So it said uh, to, to perform uh, to perform charity according to his potential. So basically, don't kill yourself, right? So so here's a uh, comment thirty six. Many authorities view this expression as a limit, implied that um, even uh, in such an act of teshuva, the person need not give beyond his potential. Accordingly, he should not contribute more than one fifth. Of the income to charity, as prescribed, he has matnos ani 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 Okay, so let's uh, let's try to understand. So even though like uh, a person is is, uh, is is fighting for his life, right, and he wants uh, to give charity in all of the religions and cults, they follow the this uh, Christianity, uh, this Muslim, they will say, of course, the, the, the more you give, the, the more it's better for you, right? But it's better for you. Uh, give, give, give everything, sell, sell your mother even, right? Give us money. But, uh, but here in Judaism, it's, it's very strict. You're not allowed to give, right? More than 20%. So you have uh, income, whatever you have income. So if the, the minimum, you give 10%, if you can, if you cannot, a different story. But uh, but ma maximum you, you give twenty percent and that's it. So and uh, our sages explain what is the rationale? Why? Because uh, okay, you, you gave to you gave forty percent, let's say, and tomorrow you you're going to get poor. You you you're going to become poor, and now we would have to take care of you. Now we ha would, would have to find sponsors for you. So say you know what? Take it easy. We have our uh, poor people as it is. We don't need more. So don't. Don't create a burden for us uh, with yourself. Just keep your money, right? Don't don't become poor and um, and um, and keep your money. So basically, of course, there is exception if a person has a hundred million dollars, so he does not need that much money to to live, right? So he in this case maybe he can, he can donate eighty percent or I don't know, ninety percent and uh, live pretty well. I have one question. Okay. Uh, I have this question since a long time ago. Okay, let's try to see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, I, uh, since the beginning, the beginning almost, I was, every time I have some income, 
at my bank account, I reserve uh, the ten percent of every income, whatever it is, whatever is the source of this income. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I put aside in a like a index fund uh, mm -hmm. where you if that fund is growing interest every every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can you give the interest that this this uh, com uh, accumulation of of income of 10% of every income I have mm -hmm. can can this this uh, be given to uh, for Estrada? Okay, so basically you you ask very very good question. So the they say I, I actually it's it's a DACA, so you, you have to give as 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 soon as they need. For example, they, they ask uh, you every every week, every, every month, so so you give. But it's possible that, that this charity or whatever no nobody is asking for you any, any money, right? So I mean you have extra and you, you don't know who to give. So basically, it's not your money, as you said, right? You, you put a separate account or you keep somehow, you, you keep uh, uh, accounting of this extra money and you, and, and you can, in some, some senses, you, so you can, uh, you can use this money. So in, in this case, well, whatever you did, they said, don't, don't invest this money into business, right? Because most likely, you're ne never going to see this money, right? So keep it on different separate account because it is not yours and you don't, don't have any right to risk it. But in your case, there is no risk. So there is, um, what is it, interest. So from this interest, you, you, you should pay 10% and the, the rest of the interest you can keep. You don't have to, you're not obligated to give all of the interest. You understand? So uh, the, the exact case is uh, maybe some people will benefit of this because... Uh, I have one child and I have no income in reality or from anybody, mm -hmm. uh, only from Hashem. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, in theory, I have no income because uh, I have this disability, I don't work. Yes. Uh, but I have, I receive, I have a, a fund that I am able to give uh, enough money to give to my child. So, mm -hmm. uh, this does this counts as, as sedaka or I, I must find yeah, another way? Whatever we ask, it's, it's a separate story. It's a, uh, it's a big, big topic. I, I don't want to answer just, uh, just uh, summary, summary. I don't want to go off of the topic. So uh, up to a certain age, so uh, I would say, just say, I think if I remember correctly, up to six. So father is, uh, is obligated to feed the, his child. After that, is not obligated. Of course, uh, uh, the Halakha changed a little uh, over, over the years and the United States forces to, to support our children, but up to the certain age. So it's a big story. I, I don't want to go over there. So ba basically, if, if a person is very poor, right? So his obligation to, to, to keep himself alive. You understand? So the, he would have to give the, the minimum uh, tzedakah per year. The, there is a, I, I think it's half a shekel, but whatever is it in, in, uh, in, uh, in your currency, right? So it's a certain uh, amount of grams of silver. So that, uh, the way I see it's, 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 it's very small coin. I mean, not very, but uh, for, for the one year that that's it. So, so if you give this, so at least you will fulfill the, the biblical mitzvah. And the rest, of course, uh, I mean, what, what is the point? A person is going to give him this money away, and then he's going to come to charity, ask for money, right? So it's not proper. Okay, so let's uh, let's leave it for halacha class. That's uh, that's okay. a huge. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So so continue. So next next opinion. Chavua Tanya, Ageres Chateshua, Chapter Three relates that um, in this instance. There is no need to comply with, with these restrictions. Just as a person would give up all his uh, financial resources, if his physical health is, uh, was at stake, similarly he should be willing to make overly generous donations to gain atonement for, for his sins. So which is, uh, as we understand, right, it's uh, the Tanya, right, is um, 
or is the Lubavitcher Rebbe as itself. So, <laughs> so he gives, uh, no, 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 it's uh, not uh, Tanya, it's a uh, uh, Balat Tanya. It's, uh, I think it's uh, first Lubavitcher Rebbe as itself, right? So, um, so he gives a very, very good suggestion, uh, like a parallel, he draws a very good parallel. So he said if, uh, if somebody uh, would need a surgery, right, uh, and uh, let's say his insurance company is not going to cover all of it. So he said, no, I, I only want to cover 20%. And uh, let me die. No, the, the person said, okay, well, what do you want? The 80% of what I have, I'm going to give you 80%. What is it? It, it, it would not even enter most of the people's uh, mind, right? They would uh, give, give the money. So, so he said that since he, his life is, is on a line in some sense, so uh, you can do over, how do he, he puts it? Um, over, um, Overly generous donations. So, in some, when they're trying to do the shua, so maybe as a one time, do, do more, more than 20%. But don't, uh, okay. Don't, don't make it uh, habitual, basically. One time, <clears throat> in some sense, like I would say, like that, to, to break a barrier, right? To, to, to get your, your merits in, uh, in, in Shamaim and then continue. But uh, it depends again where, where this go, the person is going to, to, to give. So, and as we know by now, mo most of the charity is just, uh, I mean, he's going to get more, more sins than, uh, than anything. Okay. So, continue. C, to distance himself from, far from the object of, say, of his sin. So, it says in. Uh, <clears throat> In Hilchot Diot, chapter 2, and uh, Shmone Prakim, chapter 4, the Rambam explained that though in general a person must uh, follow middle path, if he has uh, strayed from uh, the path or in one direction, he must correct that uh, imbalance by, um, by turning uh, to the opposite extreme. Uh, we're going to explain what does it mean. Similarly, in this instance, uh, Baal Teshua, must place a great distance between him and those influence, um, influences uh, which tempt him to sin. So, so basically, as we are talking in a Hilchot Dior, so it's proper to, to go in the middle path, right? But if he had a problem and he went to one extreme, so now that they say uh, the middle path for him is not, is not going to work. So he has to go a little over the middle path to another extreme, right? Especially if he had this... Uh, problem with uh, in this area of the sin, so he has to stay away and build build for him, uh, build, uh, build himself with barriers and uh, basically do not be there. <coughs> okay, one second, so, um, so, and uh, distance himself far from, from the object of the sin, 28. Uh, this is the, the fur further extension of the quality of uh, changing one's behavior mentioned in Rosh Hashanah. Okay. So D, next one. Um, to change his name. So let's see, 28, uh, 29, uh, sorry. Um, Kamen just said, Ta'anit um, two one said the three things uh, rent the evil decree. And does not mention changing one name or changing one, one, one place. For these two are merely in the, uh, intermediate to still person to, to complete the shul. Okay, so well, let's try to understand. So they did not, um, they said three things. Ramam, of course, mentioned more than, more than three. And uh, they, they do not uh, mention changing one name or, uh, or one's place. So one the one place, I mean, uh, if you can do the shua, if you uh, like, if a person uh, uh, lives in in a, in, a, in a good place in a, in a righteous or mostly righteous community, why would he move? Where exactly he's going to move? So most likely he's going to to move to to somewhere less spiritual, right? So this uh, requirement to, to to move to another place is, uh, I mean, it's not a requirement. So in in in, uh, in certain situation it would be suggested. In certain situation it's not going to be suggested, right? 
just stay where you are. Um, so that, okay, so uh, we just explained changing his name. Mm. As, as if to say, I'm a different person and not the same who sinned. But uh, I, I would say, uh, I, would, I would say, just also say, like, uh, you, you can, uh, you can uh, be the, the same Yitzchak, but it's, it's not the Yitzchak, the, the sinner, as before. Now you Yitzchak uh, Hatzadik. You understand? So you, you don't have to change your name uh, literally, but in Shemaim, your name is going to be changed. Right? It's uh, the sinner and it's uh, the Ratzak, two different people. So let's see the commentary number 40. Zor, uh, <clears throat> volume 1, page 133b, relates that after Abraham sent Hagar away, she reverted to idol worshiping practices of her natural land, right? We remember that she was from Egypt, one of the princesses uh, of Egypt. She went back and uh, she fell exactly on uh, her old practices. Later, she returned uh, to believe in one God and changed her name to Kitura as a public statement of her uh, repentance. So, so Kitura is, uh, um, com uh, comes from uh, Kitoris, right? With that, uh, Frankincense. I right. have a question about this. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I, it's, now you are telling uh, us about this, but uh, I saw the forums that this discuss about uh, whether or not uh, Agar returned to Abraham. Uh, did she return or she stayed? She, she, she. She did return. She she did the show. So it was actually as uh, as, as uh, Rashi explained um, after the Sarah uh, passed away and uh, and he remarried, uh, no, not remarried, and he married. He uh, is had married. So he said, uh, "Now I'm married. It's it's not right for for my father to be alone." So he found this Hagar wherever she was. And, he, and she, she did the show. I don't know, maybe she did the show before, but basically no, nobody invited her back before, right? But she, she was deep inside. She was a righteous woman. As we said, the angel came to her while, when she was by, uh, in, in the desert and uh, spoke to her. And uh, according to some commentaries, I think it was two angels, right? So not, uh, angels do not talk to our, our great travelers, right? So let, let's put it this way, right? But they, they talked to her because she was on, on a very high spiritual level. And it's it's knew that. So now uh, she was without Ishmael, of course, right? So he brought her back and they uh, and they remarried and uh, her name became Kitura. So Kitura, as you said, it's pleasant, pleasant because her, her deeds were pleasant. And may, many times I see it, and that's from my personal observation, so that the person is rebellious, the person that did this and that, and it's not because his nature, right? Because the, there is nobody who believes in that person. There is an, nobody who ever talked nicely to that person, just one time in his life, right? Everybody demands you, you must do this, you must do that. So some people uh, rebel because of that. Yeah, you understand? So uh, she, she, she was uh, living in, in, in the house of this, uh, of uh, Abraham. Of course, she, she got a little. Uh, crazy with the Sarah, right? That says, I'm righteous. I, I was with your husband one time and the guy pregnant. You you were with him, I don't know. Like, but that time, uh, I don't know, 40, 40, 40, 40 years, whatever, right? Uh, approximately, I don't, I don't remember exactly the numbers, right? And uh, he, he did not uh, get, uh, you did not get pregnant. Me, one time, look at me, right? So that's, uh, of course, she was young and stuff like that. And, uh, and she and she, she was uh, she, she she wanted to be with uh, with righteous Abraham. At the end of the day, Hashem said, "These kids, these extra kids, it's not your kid. I mean, we're going to give it's uh, we're going to give them gifts and send them away. So all of these nations, they send them away. They say bye bye to them, Abraham, and he did it specifically during his lifetime. Right? That's what it taught, taught us. Was. He gave them gifts and sent them away. But she was a righteous woman for sure." He would not get married, not righteous women. You understand? Uh, so, yeah. why couldn't uh, Sarah uh, have kids? Uh, because maybe the, for today, uh, her age was uh, old. 
But in those times, it was the same. It was a very, very high age. Yes, yeah. Even even for for those uh, in that time, uh, women did not give birth at that, that age, right? And 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 plus, our stage's expense. She did not have a womb. So she did not have any chance to, 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 to get pregnant. There was zero chance. And that's what Hashem wants. These, uh, all of these righteous women, they, all, all of them, uh, all of this, uh, they were barren. And they prayed, right? And they prayed and they prayed. And Hashem answered, it says that he likes to hear the, the prayer of the righteous people. Right? So, uh, so that's, uh, that's why we... We read this uh, this chapter in uh, uh, or in uh, on Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so let's see, let's uh, let's continue. So so from from this incident, right? So so uh, he, she she changed her name to Kitura. Uh, it's public statement of her her repentance. Okay, there is a further dimension uh, of the Rambam statement to refer to the concept of. Uh, uh, Hefza, the article, and Gavra, a person. Wow, so we, we would need, need to remember. Hefza, the article, right? And Gavra, the person, mentioned in chapter one. Uh, there are times when a person, Teshua, will not be powerful enough to transform the sins, Hefza, meaning uh, things, into merits. Okay. Nevertheless, since Gavra has repented, he will not be afflicted by them. He is a different person and not the, the individual who sinned. The change, uh, the change, uh, this change of his personality is reflected in the change of his name. Okay, so I mean, uh, it's uh, I I just want to clarify. So it's not necessary to, to change the name. If you want to change the name, um, you can, but it's not it's not necessary. So what 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 they're saying here? I mean, they, they literally go into into different level. I think it's from chapter ten, right? From from the last chapter, what, what he's talking about, right? So, in, if you do teshuva out of love, so all your uh, previous sins are going to be uh, transformed to the merits, right? But how many people we know that did teshuva out of love? Not many. Uh, I well, heard from from Rabbi Mizrahi. He said that in he, all of his years, so he can count and he knows thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of people who did the Shuva. He said, I can count on, uh, on one hand and it will be a lot. Yeah. You understand? People who did, uh, who did the Shuva out of love. For, for most of the people, it's, it's a mixed feeling. Right? You, 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 you have a laugh and you're afraid of the punishment. And uh, so that's, that's normal. Right, so be, be, to to have to, to do the shuva because of the fear, fear of the punishment or fear of l losing things. You understand that that that's normal. So in this case, as they say, uh, as as uh, as this com commentator explained, of course these sins are not going to be transferred, uh, tra transformed. On the, uh, the better term, the, the transformed into into the merits on one hand. On another hand, I mean you. Uh, you you are you are about the show and ev everything is is for forgiven for you right to you right so i mean you you're clean you you did not get extra because uh, with the show out of love as rabbi nachman said uh, <laughs> he said it's it's impossible to do right he said i wish i wish right otherwise that my my hasidim yeah we're, we're talking about uh, 250 years ago the Rabbi Nachman said, I wish my Hasidim would do the show out of, the, out of fear. He said, I would be very happy. So if uh, such a spiritual person 250 years ago said that the show out of fear is uh, very good and I wish they do just that and keep on that way. So needless to say, we don't have to be big heroes or little heroes. So we have to know our place. I thought that time and place, and uh, if somebody do the show out of fear, that's amazing. Most of the people that, uh, no, not most, of, many people that, that we try to, to make the show, they do not. So, so all right. Yeah, go uh, ahead. A question here. Uh, so, 
or about changing names. So I was thinking two scenarios. What if uh, uh, Noah Hai uh, once uh, be, made, I know I made, made a scene and I, 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 I am pretty sure that every transgression of a no hide has a direct capital punishment. Is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what if this no hides uh, uh, discover this and he's, uh, he, he is going to say, I will convert to Judaism so I will receive a new neshama Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, my question is, is if this no hide is no longer under capital punishment? He's not. You're right. You're right. He's not under the capital punishment. You're right. But uh, the, the topic that, 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 that you ask is, is, is not so simple. So in, in some, some cases, we would go and, uh, and say, okay, he said, you know what? I stole from this guy. Uh, I, I don't know, from this guy, Chris. I, 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 I stole that ten thousand dollars. So now I'm I'm I, I was uh, I I was myself Paul, and that's what I did. So so now now I'm parents, right? I have Jew, Jewish neshama. Do, do I have to pay, pay, pay Chris? So I would say just say even though halakhically maybe you're not uh, obligated to pay, uh, pay Chris, but but look the, the, these Gentiles they going to, how these uh, people are going to look at you, right? So now you 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 they say look. Look at this cro crooked nation, right? And uh, look at look at these crooked people that they accept. You understand? So it's very proper, even though not obligated by halacha, but uh, but to go to this Chris, make arrangement. Look, I I I had that job. I, I borrowed to build the business. I did not build the business. This and that. So please, I'm I'm going to pay you fifty dollars a month. Please forgive me. That's uh, that's much I can do and stuff like that. That would be the proper arrangement. But um, many other things, where the, whatever person do did while he was not high, uh, they left uh, raised. And same same with the Jewish person. I will tell you more. When the Jewish person gets married, right? So uh, bride and groom they fast the whole day. They fast, right? And until after the, the chupa. Why why do they fast? Because for them it's it's like a Yom Kippur, right? Why? Because all of the sins, not all of the, but uh, most of the sins for them are being erased, right? And now they, uh, they, they were uh, Abraham and Sarah, two, two separate people, and now they become a family, so it's separate unit. You understand? And this separate unit does not have sins. That's uh, what uh, Rabbi Rubin said many, many, many times. To, so you, you're not, now you're pure, and he, uh, the, the, this girl is pure, you are pure, and now you have a new family, and now you, you're allowed to mix dancing, so from the day, from an hour, or from an hour zero, right? From from a one, for a first minute of, of, of your purity, right? Guess what? You accumulated one billion sins. You, you understand? So person cannot be so stupid. So basically, you need to, to have a rabbi and ask him a question and may, make sure that he's God fearing. And somebody asked me a different class, how do you know the the, the person is God fearing? The rabbi is God fearing. You understand? Okay, so I explained there, but we're not going to spend the time on it. But uh, but but person cannot be basically stupid. You understand? So in in uh, and risk his alama ba just just because he's lazy and he, and he does not know what what to ask. That, that's not a good idea to be that uh, that dumb and not to not know what to ask. At least when you learn things, at least you would have a question. Right, so some some uh, some people say uh, uh, like um, the uh, one one lady, right, in one of my class. So she asked a lot of questions. So she ap I, I apologize. I say you you don't have to apologize. I mean, uh, well, when you have uh, questions, it means that you're thinking that you have uh, some uh, like some interest. I, I I know that you participate. You write all of these questions, and they all make sense. You're learning, right? So, and, and unless you ask questions, I, and unless you know areas where where, where to learn, you you're going to you you're doomed, basically. <clears throat> okay. okay. So, uh, two scenarios were um, about this changing name. Uh, one is on purpose, and the other is uh, accidental. But now, I I will uh, take this to extreme. What if I'm not high? Uh, decides to to make 
many sins on purpose, even murder, and then he decided to convert to to be exempt from everything from the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, he, 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 exactly. So um, it's actually I, I'm, I'm, it's it's actually in this in, in this uh, in this book. I don't remember which chapter, but Trambom is going to say, if we care about the Norheids or Jews, I mean, uh, you, 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 the question can, can be extended to, to the Jew, right? So Jew, Jew sinned all his life. He did all the horrible sins. And he said, look, look, I, I'm, I'm young. I'm strong, physically fit. When I'm going to turn 40, I'm out. I'm going to be the biggest tzaddik, right? So our sage said, Ram, uh, Rambam clearly says, Hashem is not going to allow him to do that. He's going to be so married in a sin, right? So it's it going to be like part of him. Even 20 years, 15 years, five years, three months ago, he was, he, he said, no, 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 you're not. When I'm going to be turned 40 on that day, next day, I'm going to be there for Shacharis. I'm going to put fill in and I'm going to be, be in a, a different person. But until 40, I want to live a life to the full extent. Yeah, you know what? Hashem said, oh yeah? Oh yeah, you, you, you're telling me how, how to run my world? You, uh, let's say whose uh, who's world is going to stay, your or mine. So basically, it's not like uh, Hashem is against him. He's going to take out all of his uh, help. And this person would not be able to, to make this, uh, to, to make the show. And I see, I know a few people, unfortunately, I inviting them to classes. Please come, please join. Maybe once a week, maybe fifteen minutes, right? So long ago, a long, long time ago, I was very flexible. I'm going to learn one on one with you. And guess what? Not, not yet, not yet. I have this project, that project. And guess what? They did not learn many years exactly as a level zero. And how many times I said, no, no, no you're not. Um, you totally, you, you teach. Uh, no, Ashkenaz, right? Ashkenaz. I say, and I know Sfart also. I know the differences. Not all of the different, but many different. He said, no, no, no. We are Nusach, no Nusach, what is it? Nusach Sfart. All of the people without, without failure who told me that exactly on the same level. They did not open the book. They did not join any classes. You understand? So that's a uh, main. Many times a person has to be smart. It's a suggestion from Eid Sahara. Unfortunately, so continue. <clears throat> so in in all of these cases, I, I would say in in order to have the right person to ask uh, the question, in order even to have your uh, this question in your mind, you have to have merits, right? So well, one of the merits it's the tzedakah to the right place. So Hashem would have pity on you and send you the video, send you some material, send you some article, send you a rabbi yelling at you. So. Right, so and, uh, and you would ask the right question, and you go to the right direction. So let's uh, let, let's try to finish up. So it says uh, E uh, to to change his behavior in its entirety to good and uh, and, and and the path of the righteousness. Forty one in R Rosh Hashanah sixteen B cites the example of the people who knew there. God saw their deeds and they, uh, that they repented from their uh, evil. Ill will waste. So they, they, they put the sackcloth on, on themselves and they uh, they fasted, they make uh, crazy people, right? So they made even uh, uh, the, the animal fast. So that's uh, basically too much. So what did uh, what this the, what did this cow do, right? The, the cow sinned, I eat, eat grass, right? So why would it uh, have um, the, the, this animal fast? But people who do not have direction, so they sometimes they go overboard and that's also a problem, right? Okay, so, but, uh, but the point is that Hashem saw their deeds, that they actually repented. Okay, so next one, last one, to travel in exile from, uh, from his home. Commentary changed one place is mentioned uh, uh, in a passage from Rosh Hashanah, okay. Exile, uh, exile atones ato for sins because, uh, it, as we said, makes people a uh, person humble and he does know what to do and where to go. And it's a uh, uh, <laughs> person very much. Commentary The Torah obli obligates a person who in inadvertently kills a fellow Jew to seek exile in a city of refuge. 
Uh, that's uh, from the Torah. So, of course, um, if, uh, as, as we said, in, inadvertently on, right? However, the, um, the Persian influence of exile is not, um, is not confined to that specific instant and helps atone for, uh, for all sins. So, in 37B, maybe like in his town, he was a big shot and stuff like that. Now he moves, he is nobody. And uh, sometimes uh, he has place to sleep. Sometimes he does not have place to sleep. Sometimes people give him food, sometimes no. So it's a very humbling experience. Thus, when Adam sinned, he has exiled from the Gan uh, Garden of Eden. That's, that's the first exile, right? When Jewish people as a whole sinned, they exa uh, were exiled from Eretz Israel. Maybe by in parts, in, in stages, but uh, the bottom line, we were exiled from that. Accordingly, through the Jewish history, many sages, uh, for example, Russia, Idun Adon, traveled to the self-imposed exile for a number of years in order to gain atonement. I'm not sure what Vilna Gaon did, but, uh, <laughs> or, or, or Russia, this holiest of, of, of the holiest, but on another hand, maybe, maybe one of the reasons, I don't just suggestion, it's a suggestion of my own, Maybe one of the reasons they were so holy that they uh, put themselves from this exile, right? So one more time, the whole sentence. Exile atones for sins because it causes person to be submissive. Commentary. By nature, when person uh, moves into new surroundings, he is not known by the local people and must suffer many difficulties until he becomes appreciated by the new neighbors. Right, of course, these circumstances force him to adopt submissive attitude. So basically, people can kick him out. So I, the, the, this guy is known uh, has uh, ten brothers. I mean, you 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 mess with his uh, with this guy. He's going to bring his ten brothers. He's going to kill you, basically, right? But this guy, he's uh, he's uh, he just came here. We don't know who he is, and uh, we can uh, people uh, might, might want to take advantage of him. Okay. So, and he becomes humble, meek of the spirit. So let's read the last commentary. And I guess that's time to stop. Yes, so last commentary. The Ritva and Rosh Hashanah, same phase, explain the three qualities enables person to humble and master his evil inclination. These qualities, I'm, I'm sorry, these qualities. Similarly, the Asherah Teshuvah, section one, Rabbi Yona, leads humility as one of the fundamental requirements of the show, right? So, so I was explaining to somebody today um, that we are, we are responsible only for our efforts, Ishtadlus, right? And uh, the outcome is uh, up to Hashem. So, but when one person like when when he gets upset, when the outcome not according to his uh, likings. Right? The, because he invested uh, or she invested so much energy, so much I don't know, light, light force, I don't know, so many hours. So that's, uh, that's a sign that so I, I shocked the person. I mean, I'm not sure why it was exactly shocking, but it is, is a, uh, is a sign of arrogance. So a person said, because I did uh, extend this effort and this effort and that effort, everything has to go smoothly and fine. Right? Who, who, who told you that? Right? If you cross Hashem out of the picture, yes, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, the, the desired outcome, right? Or expected outcome. But if you put Hashem in the picture, right? So who, who told you just because you extended all of your efforts, you put your life for this job, they're going to pay you? I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. So a person has to be humble. Right and say, Bizrat uh, Hashem, they're going to pay me. I'm going to be able to feed my family. But otherwise, I mean, don't, don't, uh, don't make yourself basically Hashem and, and predict all of the outcomes. Right. So one more time about Rabbeinu Yona, least uh, humility as one of the fundamental requirements of the Teshuva. Right, but a person must be humble. Explaining how Baal Teshuva must not become angry. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, very easily, it's very easy when you're changing your life completely to become agitated and angry. I mean, that's, uh, I think that's normal way of uh, things, right? Become upset uh, with a fellow Jew, 
right? So, I mean, that they did not say thank you to me and I did so much and they, they did not appreciate it. I say hello, they did not answer. So, I mean, just be humble, right? Or, um, or, or um, disturbed by anything. Okay, somebody like say, uh, you know what, you're going to, I, I mean, you, you, you're friends with somebody, you were helping somebody, now they say, you know what, uh, thank you very much, I don't need you any longer. So which is a common thing, right? These people, his uh, suppression of his feelings of anger will cause God to suppress his anger toward him. So all of the suppression of the feelings of anger, so it's not for free. So that's what I always uh, tell people, it's not for free. Hashem sees what's going on with you and how you wanted to, to answer this guy or, the, or this lady or this, uh, you know, this uh, non-Jew or Jew, or whatever, it doesn't matter, right? And, and you're right 100% and you have all of the rights to answer and you did not, guess that? Guess what? It's not for free, right? So Hashem... Um, is, is, is going to, to suppress his anger toward, toward you, right? So I think it's a, it's a good game. Don't, don't, don't ever see when, when, when you suppress your feelings and, uh, and did according to our sage said that you're going to lose anything. Absolutely not. So the Sifra explained that uh, this course of behavior will lead to full atonement as Vaikra 2641 states, when their uh, stubborn uh, when their stubborn spirit is humble, I will forgive their sin. Right? So, but person must make himself very humble. So I am nobody. Hashem is everything. Okay. So we can stop here. Any questions on any topic? Please go ahead. Um, uh, one conversion. Do the kids of a Nohai who converts? get converted automatically without getting without getting into the mikveh that's the question no no they they, they must go go to the mikveh for 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 example if a family converts right and they have uh, kids uh, girl uh, well, let's say three years old and a boy is seven years old right so the girl is uh, going to be with her mother to to the mikveh right the boy going to the, with his father uh they, they do so circumcision to, to both of them, right? Boy and, and, and the father, right? And, uh, but uh, when, um, when they become mature, meaning halakhically mature, when the girl be, becomes uh, 12 and boy becomes 13, so they uh, call them to the base dean, right? I, I'm not sure if parents are allowed to be there. Maybe yes, maybe no. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't wanna say, I, I think no. So, and the, the base dean is going to ask them, I, do you want to stay Jewish? So well, when she was three years old, or this boy was seven years old, I mean, uh, the, the father said, you're coming to me, uh, with me, we're going to dip to this pool, and uh, this rabbi say whatever they say, they say Mazel Tov, it's going to be a big, big celebration after that. But uh, did he have a choice? Uh, no. I mean, he had, uh, he, he lived this Jewish life, let's say. He went to Yeshiva, he was keeping kosher, everything, keeping Shabbos and stuff, but... Uh, when he is now 12 years old, uh, the 13, sorry, the, the boy 13 years old, so he, he has to say, right? If he says, I don't want to be Jewish, that's it. Nobody is uh, allowed to force it. You understand? And, and he does, he's, not, he's not going to get punished for anything. Uh, but uh, wasn't uh, him having already a uh, brit The The for. For the boy, yeah, so, so he has a brisma. What was the problem? They, they do, uh, here, for example, in America, they, they do in, uh, in, uh, in the hospitals. So, uh, of course, the, 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 there is no, 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 this uh, step uh, pre like the, the pulling back, but basically, technically, technically, after the fact, after it's all set and done, so it, it is uh, after the fact. It's, uh, I don't want to put any, 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 any thoughts in, in anybody's mind. So, but after the fact, this, uh, this circumcision is okay. And they just draw a little blood, like where is the needle, to, to prick a little, to, to draw one blood. And after the fact, there is a kosher circumcision, after the fact. You understand? Yeah. So that doesn't matter. So many, many times, uh, if, uh, 
if the person is from America, I don't know in what country, but other countries, uh, of course they, they, they do not force, but uh, it's it's a parent's right, right? They, they for for want to do the, the, the circumcision. I mean, even uh, many many non non Jews have uh, the uh, circumcision. You understand? So in this case, they would not need to like maybe prick a little bit of the needle. My father, psh, <laughs> that's a that's a tough one. And plus, it uh, we we have to understand for adult to do to go through the circumcision, it's it's a surgery. Right? I I I I remember I saw the the discussion whether to put them at, under anesthesia or do not put them. So the people, uh, I think the bottom line said, no, you know what? Oh, then let's put it under anesthesia. It's it's a real surgery. You cannot just put uh, uh, just expect a person to to hold to, to hold himself back, right? So it of course it it costs money. It's it's not free basically. Uh, uh, talking about this, I have a question related to the uh, the neshama or the nefesh or the ruach that is in the blood. So. Uh, this uh, person that gets circumcised uh, uh, lost uh, part of his body. Uh, and what this part of his body uh, carries some uh, a level of degree of, the, of, of nefesh or ruach or neshama? No, no, no. no. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a sense of flesh that there is no, no part of the souls in, in the flesh itself. Right, so so they 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 have to bury it, but it's it's actually when when they do the, the circumcision, so uh, they meaning what the, this uh, the the place that when 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 they do the circumcision is the most physical place in a, in a human in a man's body, right? And when they do uh, the spiritual thing, so it's when physical meet meet spiritual, basically. But it has to, not, nothing to do with the soul. The soul comes. Uh, when uh, when when a person dips in into the mikveh, so he comes, he he goes uh, with uh, like say he, he, his name was Chris, right, and goes uh, goes out like uh, from the mikveh is Yosef. You understand? Okay. And at that moment, uh, this uh, many times, many times, it it depends on on the person. Uh, many times at that specific moment, the soul enters him. But it, uh, as, as was reported by, and, um, by Rabbi Rubin, so it's, I mean, uh, from, from the testimony of the people, sometimes the soul would come like several months later. But person feels like amazing experience, you know, the, when, when the soul uh, comes, but it, it's going to come. If it was true conversion for the right reasons and a person like did not lie and he intend everything that he said on this, on this based-in uh, interview, so this uh, the Jewish soul is going to come. Uh, so, uh, what uh, talking about the, the blood? So, what is exactly the entity that the blood carries? A soul, a ruach, a nefesh, or what, what, how it's called? I, I, don't, I don't exactly remember. I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a nefesh in the blood. If I remember correctly, I'm not. Uh, I'm not this uh, Kabbalist. Because but is, well. I, I'm wondering what when when people get hurt or they have some accident or whatever and they they have loss of, of blood. Yes. Uh, 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 what what happens? Where is the soul getting away when the blood? Uh, exactly. Is coming? In, in that, that, exactly. So so exactly. You you're right. Hundred percent. So exactly. Some part of the soul is uh, is getting away. Right, it is uh, so. So the, 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 the person uh, f uh, f uh, feels uh, like uh, like very very bad, right? We're very very tired. We're very very weak. And um, I would say, just said in the Talmud, I don't don't exactly remember the uh, the measurement, but uh, somehow I want I want I want to say that one reviews, but uh, that does not look uh, that does not sound. Realistic to me, maybe I know few reviews, maybe one, maybe few reviews. Whatever we say that we, uh, the amount that we say uh, kiddush over. So there are a few, a few opinions. The most linear, I think it was uh, 86 cc, and the maximum that I heard uh, 
from Chazanish was 150. It's a grams, right? So you see, it's like where we can work to grams, right? So that's uh, the minimal amount uh, that the soul can uh, still uh, live uh, in, the, in the body. So it, it, it must have this minimal amount all the time. If it goes like below this minimal amount, maybe they, uh, um, they can uh, keep, keep this uh, person alive through the, all of this machine and stuff like that, but the, the, the soul is going to live. You understand? So, or, I mean, of course, doctors know that, uh, that the minimal amount of blood must be there. It's a first law. All of the other wounds are second law. So uh, this, this part of the person goes away forever? No, no, it's, uh, it, uh, it restores, as this blood restores every, I don't know, uh, uh, like uh, blood's, uh, blood regenerates itself. I, I don't know, so it, it takes several days. Yeah, but I mean, under normal circumstances, under this uh, critical circumstances, as you explained that he lost a lot of blood. Yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot longer time. Yeah, but- Oh, so the, when the-, the... Going to, You see, soul is not, is not physical. We, we, we must remember, first, soul is not physical. I mean, of course, I said, this, this, this amount of gram, that amount of gram, but it has nothing to do with, with the soul. It's a spirit, spiritual being, spirit, spiritual thing, right? So um, it, it is there, it is there. So, and, and it's going to get attached to, 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 to the smallest amount of uh, halakhically acceptable. I don't, as I said, I don't remember the, Demons. So, so we can conclude that when the the, 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 the body of the person uh, regenerates the the not reg regular levels of blood, the, the entire part, the entire person gets uh, as it was before. It it, it it becomes different. So so when when the blood re regenerates, right? So for for example, I give you this uh, specific example. So a person did not eat kosher and until uh, yesterday, right? And now he decided to, to, to keep kosher since this morning, let's say, and he keeps only kosher food. So the, the, the food got, got absorbed into the blood. That's how it works. Right? Everything, uh, blood, uh, blood absorbs all, all, all of these things. And uh, that, that's how it works, right? So now, now after three days, five days, whatever, when, when he ate only kosher food, so the blood changes. So, and the blood goes to, to the brain. So his brain changes. You understand? So it, now it's a different person. He thinks different because he does not have all this tumor from, from non kosher food. Uh, so, so soul changes. Soul changes in some so, sense. Right? So, I mean, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and see, yes. And, and uh, I, so, what about people who donate? donate blood, they souls get mixed together or what? That's a, that, that's a big problem. So I, I heard this, uh, the, the, the story from, uh, I think from, from Rabbi Mizrahi, I'm not sure from which book or whose story was it, but, but the person uh, got the blood from, uh, from Gentile, it's just, just from, from the bank, right? And he said that I suddenly, after he, he recovered, he went out of the hospital. Three months later, I like uh, rap music it's from nowhere. So this, uh, this soul, as you said, so it, it, part of the soul, of course, so it goes directly to the blood. So when when uh, when person gets the blood infusion, he gets this soul from all of this gentle, from all of these uh, things. So, and they, it's, I think if you search on internet, I think it, they, they, they did research on it. For sure, for sure, this uh, soul of that person uh, goes into, into into the blood of a new person. But in Israel, as I, as I know, they have a special uh, bank of blood for Shomer Shabbos people. So people say, I, I don't want just anybody's Arab blood, so this Christian blood. No, 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 I want only blood from Shomer Shabbos. Of course, you have to pay money, you have to be a member, and if God, God forbid something happened, they would deliver a special company. Of course, you have to pay the source. They're going to deliver blood whatever you need it, right? But uh, but but you you ensure that you're going to to to, to get kosher blood. Absolutely, that's uh, the soul stays. But but as we said, it's uh, it stays, but it's uh, spiritual. 
right? So even though he donated the blood, let's say this Jew donated the blood, so the, the amount of the soul that was before is there. Of course, he feels weak and this and that. That's understandable. But but the soul is there. Okay. So it is, uh, it would be a, a general rule uh, forbidden to accept blood from a, a Jew living in Israel or any other. have a choice. You see, the, 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 this is private company. It, it's, it's not a government company. It's a private company. You want to pay, you pay. But may, many people don't, don't have means to pay. They, they don't have mean, means to buy food. You know? You understand? Pay, pay for their electricity and stuff like that. They're going to, to, to buy this insurance. Maybe I need blood. It's the, the last thing on their list. You understand? So, and in, in America, I don't, I don't think we, we have this uh, thing. Maybe, yes, maybe I, I don't want to say. But, uh, but uh, people you usually count uh, not to get sick <laughs> and not to need blood. You understand? So, I mean, if needed, they would ask. But uh, but uh, well, what I know when uh, big, big rabbi is uh, sick, so the people from the community would donate blood. So in, in this case, uh, we have no, or relatives uh, usually relatives same same some uh, same uh, uh, group uh, group uh, like a blood group, right? So they, they would donate. So in, in this case, so uh, it. It, it is on a, on, on a case by case family basis. You understand? When my, my friend uh, was sick with uh, cancer, so he needed blood and stuff like that. So we, we, we've all donated blood. You understand? So that's, uh, that's how it works. Well, okay. Uh, I have three more, but uh, I think it's enough for today. Okay. Yeah. Let's stop for today, but Bizrat Hashem continue tomorrow. So keep, keep your question coming. But thank you very much. Good night until tomorrow. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.